Live. This is Monica Dennington, and yes, that's right. It's Thursday night, and this is TikTok Live. I'm very glad that you have decided to join us, and um, it's a privilege to me that you would take out your Thursday night and spend it in fellowship with us. We're going to get to a lot of letters tonight. Um, we're going to switch up the format on you a little bit, um, and so that we can get to more letters. The past couple of weeks, um, we've been kind of cut short on our letter time, so we've decided that that's what we're going to focus on. On. This week, we do have a couple of announcements um, or just reminders um, that we want to cover. But first, before we do anything, let's all get ready to. What a synchronized tweet is you just pull up your Twitter account or your Facebook account. Whichever account that you use the most to uh, communicate with your friends and um, with your network of people on the Internet. So pull that up right now. I'm giving you time to do that. And then just, you know, let everybody know that you are here at www.tiktok.tv, that we are joining together in fellowship and prayer and Bible study. We're here to have a good time together and to honor the Lord together. And you can just tell them whatever you want to, but just invite them to join you um, for this version of TikTok Live. So um, our, if you're ready, we're going to do this all on the count of three. We're going to do our synchronized tweet. On the count of three, three, two, one, tweet. There you go. All right. And I do know you guys have been doing your synchronized tweets because then I, go, I went back on Facebook and I saw them several times. So see everybody's tweets coming up on, on Facebook. That's really fun. So anyway, hello. I'm so glad to see you. I want to say hi to Ruth, to Peg. Pleasure. Hello, Pleasure. We want to say hi to Steve, of course. Love you, Steve. And Amanda. We all love Amanda very much. Very glad to see you, Amanda. And our good friend, Emma. And Emma, uh, for those of you who don't know Emma, you might want to go and check out um, the video of Emma. I believe it's on Webathon TV, um, but it's a video of uh, her sharing her ministry with us where she, um, you know, would go out on the streets of Dallas and give people sandwiches and stuff and just basically make friends. So she, uh, she kind of shows how she does that, and I got to tag along that night. She's a really neat lady, and uh, you need to get to know her for sure. Um, I wanted to, real quick, um, just mention again the home Bible study groups that we are putting together right now. Um, we are getting your letters, all of you who have written. Um, I am getting your letters. Um, as I said last week, we are right now putting together the infrastructure, <clears throat> choosing the rooms that we're going to be using, and what the home Bible studies are, um, are, are going to be online groups um, that we are, um, once we get in enough information and, and enough um, <clears throat> people from a certain geographic location, we're going to organize those by um, by geographic location, okay, so that you guys can start to get together with people that are in uh, your area, okay, and eventually, um, you know, you'll be able to come together physically as well if you like. However, it is based online, and so um, you will need a webcam. Um, <clears throat> you can watch without a webcam, but what we really want to accomplish with these rooms is we want to um, give you the ability to interact with other members of the body and to become a family as we are supposed to. As scripture says that, you know, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, okay? And as we're coming out of some of the institutional churches that we have been involved in, um, which, you know, we can see are not operating really as um, disciples, you know, the leadership and, and what we're being taught. As we're coming out of those things, it can be kind of lonely. But don't fret, don't worry. God does have a plan and he does have a plan right here at TikTok Ministries as well to bring us together. So this is how this is going to work. You're going to be able to get on with your webcams to a room with the same people every week and go through a Bible study. We will provide the curriculum. We will provide <clears throat> the room the place online for you to get together, as well as a free website for you. It, it, there is a small cost to us for that, but for you it's free. And um, we do have a limit to the number of um, Bible studies that we can start um, at the beginning, okay? Um, so there are going to be some requirements for the people who want to either host or facilitate these groups and things like that. But if you want to be part of one, okay, I need you to send me your emails. I'm going to read you a couple of these emails that are coming in. 
This one says, Hello, Monica and Gary. I am 23 years old and live in Portland, Maine, and I am very interested in being a part of a home Bible study. I also have a webcam. This is a good example of what I need you guys to send in, okay? I need to know if you're just wanting to be a part of one online. I definitely need to know if you have a webcam. <clears throat> and... I need to know if you are interested in facilitating a group, um, either in your own home or just online, okay? And we will be going um, later into what the requirements for that are, but right now, just let me know if you're interested. I need you to write in and then be patient, know that I have your letters, and know that I am waiting until we have all the information um, together and we can communicate the same thing consistently to everyone at the same time, okay? So send in those letters. Also, um, why don't you guys get on the chat right now? Now and just let Gary know if you have a webcam, okay? Um, if you're not even participating on the chat, but you're just watching right now, I encourage you to just click on that little place right underneath the chat, and you'll see your cursor, you know, kind of beeping at you a little bit. And uh, then you just you just type your message in there and click on say. It's very easy. Um, but if you could just let me know whether or not you have a webcam, positive or negative, just let me know. Yes, I have a webcam. No, I do not have a webcam, okay? That's all I need to know, and that's just feedback that we need to know how many people are able to do this right now, and when we have enough, we will um, let you know what we're going to do with that one of these TikTok lives, okay? So uh, we do have a reason for that. Go ahead and get on the chat and do that. I'm going to read you another one. This one says, I just started to watch your videos this weekend, and I believe I've seen over 10 so far. All right. <laughs> I'm thankful for the scripture you have clarified by presenting the whole counsel of God. I've come out of the apostate organized church system, and I'm amazed at how much error is still being corrected. I live in the Phoenix area, and I'm interested in finding a home Bible study in my area if it would be God's will. I'd love to facilitate a group in my home. The hindrance would be my husband, who is an unbeliever, but I will pray that he will give his approval. Whether I join an existing group or start one, I'm looking forward to fellowshipping with like-minded believers. And then this person gives me her phone numbers, um, you know, where she lives, um, and um, then she says, thank you. And God bless. Oh, hi. Okay, I think I just said hi to that person. Yeah, I didn't realize that was you. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I try not to use names sometimes when there's identifying information, so. Um, but uh, let's see. Yeah. So, um, and to this person, by the way, um, who I believe is watching right now, um, I, I appreciate the fact that you are being sensitive to your husband, as the Bible says that we're supposed to be. And I am certain that the Lord will work that um, that detail out, but certainly um, there there will be a way that you can participate in one way or another, and I'm very happy that, that you took the time to write, okay? So send me your letters if you are interested. We're very excited about this. This is going to enable us to come together to really get into the in-depth Bible studies together, go through the seminars. You know, so many times it's real easy, um, you know, when you go to the, the Bible teachings on YouTube or wherever you find them, and, okay, and, um, you know, it's real easy to just pick one out or another, you know, just based on the title. But what we really need to do is go through the entire thing um, together. And um, we need to go through it, uh, you know, systematically going through all the scriptures because that's how the Holy Spirit teaches, line on line and precept on precept. And when we do it that way, allow the Lord to, to reveal, as that letter said, the whole counsel of God to us. Yes, it does take some time and some patience to go through that. You know, it's not a, a drive through kind of situation, you know, <laughs> fast spiritual food. Um, you do have to invest that time, but then God is able to lay these principles, this, these foundations in place in your life, and then they cannot be moved because they're based on scripture and you know what those scriptures are. Okay, we're looking forward to that. I want to uh, open us up in prayer. Gary, are there any specific prayer requests we need to start out with on the chat, or we just need to pray together? Okay. Um, we do have one prayer request um, by Tracy for one of her co co-workers. And we are going to um, do some more prayer here in just a minute, but I just want to open up with, uh, with prayer right now. Let's all go to the Lord together, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, first of all, that you would forgive us of our sins, um, the ones that we are aware of, um, we are very sorry, Lord, and um, you are always revealing these things to us, um, you know, as we go through life, through your word, 
and um, there are things that we are aware of. We are sorry, and um, it is our pledge to keep a good conscience towards you and to trust your Holy Spirit to give us the power as we move forward in obedience to you in those areas. Um, we pray that you would wipe our consciences clean, Lord God, and wipe our sin um, away and throw it as far as the east is from the west, Lord God. Remove those things from our lives. And I also pray um, for uh, Tracy and her coworker, whatever that situation is right now, Lord God. Um, I pray that you would take care of that situation according to your will. And for everyone involved, that you would reveal your will and your love to them and that you would draw them to you according to your word, Lord God. We ask um, for all of us that you uh, would just help us to hear what you have to say to us today. You know, all those... those um, hindrances that we have, whether it's, you know, the sin that we know about. Also, we ask that you forgive us of the sins that we are not yet aware of. You know, like David said, those secret hidden sins that we don't even know about yet. We pray that you would come in and remove those things from us. And we know that means that you're going to have to reveal them. And, um, you know, that's what your word is there for. But I pray that you give us the courage. We pray together that you give us the courage and the humility to take that discipline for what it is, an expression of your love for us because we are your children. And to take that sting and know that the sting of the discipline goes away pretty quick, but, um, but the result of the discipline is eternal. It's righteousness. And so I pray that you'd open up your, our hearts to um, your word, also to each other, to come to know each other and to walk in fellowship in the light as we're supposed to, to give us wisdom as to how to uh, be in relationships with one another as everybody's getting to know each other on the board. Lord, um, I just pray that we would treat each other in a way that honors you. And I'm so glad to know these people, um, the people that I do know here, Lord, that have been gathering. I'm so proud to know um, so many people who do operate according to love. And I thank you for each and every one of them. And I thank you most of all for you and for your word and um, for the blood that um, Jesus that you shed for us and um, for just this, this great, amazing gift, this great news that you have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I wanted to start out with a little bit of uh, news. It's not good news, um, but it's actually um, more for the sake of praying. We need to pray for the body of Christ. And um, these are two news items that came, um, came over the ticker just, uh, just a few minutes before we went on, really. And it just goes to show you how, um, you know, there is a flood of this kind of news. If you are looking for it, these things are very common, okay, what I'm getting ready to read to you. And it is an indication of the state of the church and the leadership in the church. Now, um, I am not sharing these things with you um, so that we can point at other churches or people and say, oh, look at all the things that are wrong with the church, okay? That doesn't do any good. What we are supposed to do is take up each other's cause in prayer, okay? So we're going to pray for all the people involved here, okay? And I'm going to read these to you. The first one says, ex-worker at, and I'm, I'm not going to include specific names here, okay? Ex-worker at cr these certain Christian camp, the certain Christian camp, it's a kid's camp, you know, summer camp, faces additional sex abuse charges. Okay, I'm just going to read this to you. This is in Missouri. A former assistant director at a Christian sports camp in Missouri waived his right to a preliminary hearing on sex abuse charges. Some of the boys who say this man molested them after meeting them at this camp were prepared to testify at the hearing on Tuesday. Instead, a judge sent the case to trial court after the prosecuting attorney amended the charges. The prosecutor dropped two felony charges and added eight more. Investigators believe some of the molestations occurred at the camp, but others occurred at this man's home during private Bible study sessions and other places. The original probable cause statement said the victims, who are now men, said the abuse began in 1999 and continued through 2008. The probable cause statement for the newest charges indicate at least two more out-of-state victims, out-of-state, okay, say they were abused between 2006 and 2008. This man is charged with three counts of first-degree statutory sodomy, three counts of second-degree statutory sodomy, and four counts of enticement of a child. 
If he's convicted, he could get prison sentences of at least five years for each crime. If the preliminary hearing had been held, hearing had been held and the accusers would have testified, the judge would have closed the hearing to spectators to protect their identities. Okay? I'm going to read another one to you um, in the same vein here. Ex-pastor. Now, this, this man I just spoke of, one of the reasons we're not using his name is because he has not been convicted. Okay? This says, ex-pastor who killed wife gets 65-year prison term. Okay, this is in Waco, Texas. Jurors on Thursday sentenced a former, former Texas minister to 65 years in prison for murdering his wife and trying to cover it up as a suicide. Okay, uh, jurors deliberated for about two hours before agreeing on the sentence for this man. He had uh, faced from probation to life in prison for slipping his wife sleeping pills and suffocating her in 2006. When the judge asked if there was any legal reason why he should not be sentenced, this man said, I truly believe in my innocence. I believe the jury made a mistake in this. During closing arguments, Prosecutor Crawford, or I'm sorry, I won't use that name, who previously called this man a murdering minister, said he killed his wife in cold-blooded cruelty and seemed to take pleasure in getting away with it. So there are the, both sides of it, okay? But he was convicted. Two of his daughters were asleep in the house when he killed his wife, okay? Basically, the reason I'm reading this to you is twofold. First of all, we're going to pray for these people, okay? We're not only going to pray for the victims, but everyone who is involved, okay? Our reaction to these things um, many times is to pass judgment and to point the finger and to say, look at everything that's bad, okay? That's not walking in power, okay? That's not walking in the power that Jesus Christ has for us. It's also not walking in the love that Jesus Christ has for us. Yes, love does um, expose evil, okay? But that is the job of Jesus Christ. And this is what I want to point out to you. Jesus looks at his whole church in Revelation, okay? He, and there are seven churches that are represented there. And he speaks to each one individually. And so you can see that each kind of have a different personality, different characteristics, okay, so to speak. And Jesus looks at some of the churches and says, great job, two of them. He says, you know, basically you're being persecuted, you're, you're suffering for my sake, hang on, okay. He looks at some of the churches and says, hey, you're doing some things right, I commend you for that, but if you don't change these things that you're doing wrong, I'm going to remove your lampstand from its place. So, you know, you're not going to be part of me anymore, not going to be part of the church anymore, okay. So he has some harsh rebuke along with um, you know, commending them for what they do right. So you see that sometimes. And then sometimes he, looks at, he looked at certain churches and he had nothing but a rebuke for them, okay? So we see all kinds of different things and we can see um, certain aspects of, of those seven churches in our own institutional churches, okay? And you don't have to be able to figure out all of the, all of the stuff, uh, you know, which church is which, is, does, does one church uh, represent a certain denomination. What you really need to do is look at what Jesus commends and make sure that you're doing that in your life, okay? And look at the things that Jesus condemns or rebukes and get rid of those things and do what Jesus says in order to get rid of those things, okay? But this is what I want to point out. Jesus doesn't take all of the churches that have bad things in them and say, ah, you know, I'm kind of pretty much done with you and throw them out the window, okay? The bride belongs to Jesus Christ. These people were ministers of the gospel, okay? We can't judge, you know, the, uh, the people who are the perpetrators or alleged perpetrators, okay? And these, um, by the way, I'm reading these because they're very representative of what is going on in many denominations right now, okay? These are not flukes. Um, if you look up um, pastor sentencing 2009, you'll see exactly what I mean. This is um, these kinds of things, murder, sexual sin, sexual abuse, um, embezzling, you know, money crimes, um, but especially, um, you know, the sexual abuse and, uh, and the violence, you are going to be shocked at how prominent these things are or how, I shouldn't say prominent, but um, how widespread they are. Sometimes they are not noticed as much as they should be, 
And you're going to see that when you, when you do that Google search. You're going to be saying, hey, uh, how come nobody told me? I knew about the, the scandal with the Catholic priests molesting boys and molesting children. You know, that was all over the news, and there was a big blowout on that, and there still is, and it's still going on, and not only in one place, but all over the world. It's a plague. It's infected the leadership. And some of us are like, oh, yeah, I know about that. But what you don't know is that it's just as prominent in Baptist circles and in many other circles, okay? And there's a spiritual root to that, okay? So when we see these ugly things popping up, we need to understand that when Jesus looks at the church, he doesn't just look at your denomination, okay? The whole bride belongs to Jesus, and we are all a part of that bride, who, all of us, who obey Jesus' commandments, who obey God's uh, commandments, and who follow the testimony of Jesus Christ. If we have that in common, we are a part of one another, okay? And we are to be concerned, not, um, not with condemnation, but we are to be concerned with an attitude of love as to what is going on in the other people's lives that are a part of that bride, even if they're not part of our denomination, okay? And so when things like this happen, you guys, this is a knife in the hearts of all of the members of the body of Christ, okay? Because not only do you have two pastors who have been taken captive to do Satan's will, okay? And goodness only knows where, they, where their sin came from, you know? Maybe they're just, you know, just a murderer and a child molester who, you know, just that's what they are. And maybe they grew up in a church where that was done to them, you know? You don't know. What we do know is that they were taken captive, to do Satan's will, right? And it is a loss to us when we lose them. And we need to pray for them. And the Bible says we are to pray for our enemies. It also says that we are to stand up for the weak and the innocent. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what the, the Holy Spirit is teaching us in the body of Christ right now. The reason that it's an abomination that we have taught uh, mistranslations and misinterpretations of the Bible that teach the body that the women... The mothers in, in the body of Christ should have no authority and should not teach. The, one of the reasons that's an abomination is because we have missed out on the wisdom that comes from a mother's heart. A mother stands up for her child, okay? One of the things a mother has, and I mean, you know, if you're faced with a papa bear or a mama bear and you just hurt the cub, you probably really don't want to deal with the mama bear, okay? Because there's something innately in them that is going to stand up for that child, Okay? And we all need to have that heart, the heart of the Holy Spirit, to protect the innocent and to protect the weak and those who cannot protect themselves. Okay? We do not hand over our children to predators just because they seem to be very spiritual people. We need to be on our guard. And yes, you guys, we need to take this as a warning. Okay? Many, many hearts have been broken here. Many lives have been devastated here. And this is, these are just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Even in these particular cases, you don't see all the people that never came forward in the case of the sexual abuse. And you don't see all of the, the instances where that sexual abuse will be repeated in the lives of the people who were preyed upon. Because, sad to say, you guys, that's how it happens. The people who are the prey become the predators as they get older. Not always, not always, but it does happen sometimes. Okay, so the damage goes on and on. Those waves, those ripples go on and on. And, and you guys, we do have spiritual power. We're going to take that authority. We are going to pray in this situation. But let's take the warning. First of all, you guys, do not be deceived. Okay, your pastor may be a great guy. Don't trust him just because he's a pastor. You guys, we don't hand our children over. God has given you authority in your family's life, okay? And that's why I want you guys to go and watch the House of God seminar because you're going to see how the authority structure that God set in place, which is God, Jesus Christ, the husband, the wife, and the children, that authority structure which is set in place um, to administer God's authority and to protect the house of God, that is undermined in the institutional church system because usually the pastor gets stuck in there somewhere between Jesus Christ and the head of the household, which is the husband. Okay, and we're going to talk about head coverings here in a little bit. But you see 
how damaging that is when we look to these people and assume that they are super spiritual and put them in that headship and we put all this trust in them and we put them up on a pedestal and nobody can live up to that, you guys. Ministers, I'm going to say this one more time. A minister is not somebody to put on a pedestal. A minister is your servant. And yes, those who work hard among you to bring you the word of God, those who work hard among you to serve you, those who work hard among, among you that, that just work to, to take care of the poor and the needy, you notice those people and you take care of them, okay? Recognize they, that they have been appointed by the Holy Spirit by the fact that they are doing the work, all right? Yes, you honor them in that way, but you don't put them up on a pedestal and, and put so much trust in them that, that you allow them to really come between um, the authority that Jesus has given um, for us to know Jesus directly, okay? They don't know God any better than you. They do not have um, a spiritual in with God that you don't have. The purpose of these people is to edify the whole body so we can all come to the same maturity, okay? We are all, we are all getting ready to be married, okay, to Jesus Christ. So that is the place we're all coming to. I want to pray for these people, okay? Um, but let us take that warning. Let us know that it is our job to take care of our children. It is our job to um, know what's going on, okay? And you really need, parents, you really need to understand that church is not necessarily a safe place for your kids. You need to have your eyes on them all the time and know what's going on, okay? So let's pray for these people. Lord God, we lift this up to you right now. We lift both these situations up to you right now. And Lord, there's so much going on in the body of Christ right now. There's so much pain, so much damage, and it's very easy um, for people to look around and, and feel defeated. But that is not what you said in your word. You said to Peter, you said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not stand against it. And so we come against the gates of hell. The gates of hell, um, the, the powers of hell, and the influence of Satan that has infiltrated this body, Lord God. And we are part of your bride. You know, regardless of what church we come, to, come from, we are part of you. We are all part of you. And you said that we march in authority, Lord God. So we reject these evil things. Yes, we reject them. We do not stand for them. And we will be, as you said, as innocent as doves, but as shrewd as snakes. We are opening our eyes, Lord God, and we are recognizing that there are wolves in sheep's clothing and that we have got to recognize people by their fruit and by the fact that they follow your commandments and not because they have an ordination of man or an outward appearance of being uh, holy or religious, Lord. We are opening our eyes to that. We take responsibility for the fact that we may not have always stepped up to our responsibility in that area. Um, as, as, you know, husbands and wives and members of the body of Christ. But right now, we, um, we do open up our eyes, Lord God. We are looking, we are paying attention, and we ask you to give us the wisdom to uh, obey you in our own lives and to lead our families in righteousness. But we also pray for all the members of the body of Christ, Lord God, that have been damaged by Satan, by the infiltration of uh, Satan's workers, which, you know, your word says, that they come, of course, they come masquerading as, as angels of light or as um, preachers of the gospel. You said, of course they do. Satan does the same thing. And so we recognize that, Lord God, and we are coming back to you humbly and with the fear of the Lord, we are coming back to your holy written word, Lord God. And we first of all ask you to forgive us for the areas in our life where we have allowed tradition and we have allowed the authority of man to replace your word and to try to excuse us from the responsibility that you've given us to simply lead a life that is in obedience to you, to love one another, to sacrifice our lives for one another, to give away what we have and not be afraid to live by faith, to share and to speak clearly your word, Lord God, to speak your truth and to proclaim your gospel everywhere we go. Lord, we take on that responsibility right now. We ask for healing in the name of Jesus for all the people in these two situations that have been abused. Lord God, for the family members of, of the, the pastor whose wife was, was murdered. We pray for the healing of their family and of his church. We pray the same thing for all of the victims um, of, of the other situation with the sexual abuse, Lord God. We pray that that sexual abuse would stop, that that pattern would not go on, 
that you would speak into the lives of all of those children that have been harmed, that are now grown, that are now men, all of those children who were preyed upon in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you would show mercy to them. I pray that you would speak your words to them. And I pray that you would heal them and that this would not be a stumbling block. You said there are many things that cause people to stumble, but woe to the person who puts that stumbling block in front of that person. If you make a child to stumble, it would be better for you to, to be thrown into the sea with a millstone around your neck. Lord God, you love those children. You love those people. They are now grown, Lord God. I pray that you would be powerful in their lives, Lord God. That you would heal them. That you would fill them with your love that you would fill them with your word, and that any damage that was done to them would be as if it never existed, Lord God. That the, the only thing that would be left is a sweet testimony of your healing power. Jesus, many people that you came in contact with in your earthly ministry knew that healing power, and they knew the reality of it, that they came to you blind and they went away seeing, that they came to you lame and they went away walking, that they came to you demon-possessed and they went away free. And so we pray for freedom, Lord God. And any demonic oppression that has come upon any of these people, we come against it in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we ask you to fight on their behalf with all the powers of heaven and to win their hearts, Lord God, that they may be a trophy, that they may be a crown jewel in your kingdom to bring you glory and honor that you deserve, Lord God. We pray for healing in all the churches, Lord. And we pray that we would be good to one another and not, you know, not pointing the finger or trying to blame each other or trying to say that we're right and everyone else is wrong, but that we would come together in unity and understand that we all have repentance to be doing, that we all need to be on our knees and we all need to be praying for one another because we have one enemy and that is Satan and we have one God that we love and that is you, Father, and your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our husband. And we love you and we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Gary, do we have any prayer requests on the board right now? Fresh coffee. Prayer request for fresh coffee. That was mine. You read my mind. <laughs> no, no fresh coffee. I've got water right now. So anything else? We're good. Okay. I'm excited. I'm going to have some time to look at some letters. First of all, yes, Gary? Okay, there's an unspoken prayer request. Let me write that down. <clears throat> We'll catch that one at the end, and Gary will let me know as we go if we have any others. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start out with a, a very short letter, which simply, we get a lot of letters like this, different kinds of questions, but I mean, basically the same thing. It says, hey, pastor, that would be talking to me, just a quick question, how did you get more than 10 minutes on, you, on your YouTube videos? We are a not-profit 501c3, but they turned us down. In other words, YouTube turned them down. Is there a secret I don't know about? And then this is uh, signed pastor somebody. I'm not going to use his name. Okay. So this person is asking how do you get more than 10 minutes on there because obviously we're able to post videos that are as long as we want to, and most people are limited to 10 minutes. People have a lot of technical questions like this. Um, they also write and say, um, you know, how do I start a ministry? What's the first step? You know, do I start, a, you know, do I become a 501c3? Or, you know, um, you know, I've done this and that, and how do I get my papers in order? Or how did you get such a good picture? Or, um, you know, how do you, I don't know, you know, just different technical questions about how you start a ministry. Okay, we do have a video called How to Start a Ministry, in which I will tell you exactly what I'm going to say right now. You start a ministry the same way that Jesus taught his disciples to start their ministry. You sell everything and give it to the poor and follow Jesus. And yeah, that means you're leaving your fish boats behind too, okay? So, you know, uh, the disciples, many of them left their family businesses, they left their livelihoods, they left everything. And that's why they had to have such great faith, okay? We should not underestimate <clears throat> the sacrifice that these men had to make in order to follow Jesus Christ, okay? It's real easy to talk about it. It's quite another thing to do it. I don't know this person who wrote, they may have already done that, okay? So understand this is not personal in any way. We give the same it's not a personal dig or anything like that. 
we give the same advice to everyone um, because when it comes to the details, okay, of, um, you know, how you do your ministry, those details are worked out if you obey Jesus, okay? But if you want to start at the end, you know, a lot of times people see a ministry and they say, oh, that's what I want my ministry to look like. And they're seeing the end result of a lot of hard labor. They're seeing the end result of seeds that have been sown, um, things that have had to die in order for those things to grow. <laughs> you know, a lot of things. They're just looking at the end result and then they're wanting to emulate the end result. Even if you are successful in emulating something that looks like the end result, like let's say you're able to get a big building with offices and, well, I don't have that, but, you know, if you're looking at a ministry you want to be like, and you have offices and you get to dress in a suit and you come in and people call you pastor and have a lot of respect for you and you have a stage to preach on and it all looks good, you know, if you didn't start out by walking as Jesus walked, the Bible says anyone who claims to be in Christ has to walk as Jesus walked, okay? So you're not going to be walking in the power of God and it's going to be nothing but a shell, all right? So if you do what Jesus said to do, Sell everything you own, give it to the poor, follow Jesus, and that's going to, you know, that's going to look different in different people's lives. And I will tell you right now, it's almost always, almost always looks messy. It's, you know, not tied up in a nice little ribbon. And you can pretty much guarantee that the people of your church are not going to pat you on the back and say, wow, you have so much faith, I'm so proud of you. They're going to wag their finger at you and say, you're being irresponsible and you're not being a good steward. <laughs> and go get a job right now because I don't want to have to take care of you. Okay? The truth is, um, that God will provide for you, okay? And um, a lot of times he provides for you by um, having you work 70 hours a week and then work full-time in the ministry, okay? So I'm not telling you guys to just go quit your jobs, be lazy, and say I have a ministry either, okay? Again, do what Jesus said to do. Start giving your life away in service to people, okay? Give your stuff away, first of all, because that takes care of the mammon issue in your heart. Jesus said the, you know... The root of all evil is the love of money, and yes, that means you. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons he starts you out that way. Get rid of your money. Yeah, you'll find out how much you did love it, and you'll find out how much you did fear it, and you'll find out just how much freedom and power you can walk in when you realize that you don't have to have it to get God's job done, okay, the job that he's given you to do, all right? So I'm not just talking to this pastor. I'm talking to everyone who writes to me questions like that. You know, I could tell you, you know, uh, there's no secret. Uh, it's just you do what Jesus says to do, and Jesus opens up doors that would have been impossible otherwise. Okay? So, um, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, we're going to go on to the next one. And um, <clears throat> last week, um, I did say that um, we, uh, we had a letter from <clears throat> a Catholic missionary who was gay, who had a problem with the fact that the Catholic Church was saying that people who are homosexual go to hell. And we dealt with that. We actually had to do it in two parts because, um, we, you know, our broadcast got um, cut short um, the week before that. So I dealt with that last week, and I also said that we had a letter um, concerning, um, uh, from another person saying, how do I stop being gay, which is the next part of repentance, okay, you, when you repent. You first have to come to an acknowledgement of the fact that what you're doing is sin. Then you can learn what God's word has to say about how he changes you into a new creation. However, because we had to spend two weeks on that, I'm going to save that for later. And I'm telling you that in case you were here and looking forward to that, to that, um, that other letter. Okay, We are going to address that, but we're going to do it later. However, I wanted to read this to you. Um, it's, it's related in one way, okay? It says, I was watching your video about the truth about the Trinity. And I watched the opening where you said many Christians' faith is built upon doctrine. And that was very deep because many people's faith are built upon the doctrine of Catholicism. Such as Sunday worship, communion, the cross, Christmas, Easter, and the list goes on. So I was actually just wondering, what is your view on these man-made teachings, Okay. The reason I wanted to mention that <clears throat> is because <clears throat> last week we were dealing with someone who wrote in that said that they were Catholic. This person obviously maybe comes from a Catholic background, and that's what they're struggling with or whatever. Um, but when it comes to man-made teachings, that's really what we're getting at, okay? 
It's not, again, one denomination or another. As we said last week, there are most certainly Catholic people who hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ and who obey God. Okay? Those are your brothers and sisters. Okay? And you have to understand that. We all have to understand that. And we have to approach this thing with humility, the body of Christ, and learn the difference between man-made teachings and the Word of God. And there is a difference, okay? As long as we are clinging to things that are outside the Bible, when it comes to man-made doctrine, um, we have to learn to put aside disputable matters. We're going to talk about that later, okay? Disputable matter is something that could go... You can interpret the Bible one way or another over a certain passage, okay? And we have to learn how to handle each other with love and respect and where the boundaries of our authority lie in the body so that we don't overstep those boundaries and start messing in other people's business and causing contention and strife and division where there doesn't need to be any. There are different parts of the body. And Scripture says very clearly that right now we see dimly as through a mirror. But then on the day of the Lord, we will see face to face. So there are some things about God that, you know, are just going to be a little bit obscured to us until we see his face. We have not seen his face. There are still things we do not know about God. And there may just be something that, for example, if you're Protestant, there might just be an insight that some person over here who happens to have been a Catholic has about God that it hasn't occurred to you yet, or that you don't yet know, and vice versa, Catholics, you know, there may be a person over here who happens to belong to some other church, but they may have an, they, you know, may have an understanding of something that you have not yet seen, we've got to have the humility to know that where we are going, where we are headed, is the same place, the same truth, okay, and that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, that's what scripture says, you have no need that anyone should teach you, because the Holy Spirit will teach you, the Holy Spirit, that anointing is with you, and teaches you, that's what it says, I believe that's in 1 John, okay, and the truth that the Holy Spirit is bringing us all to is the same truth, not a whole bunch of different denominations, that's garbage, Christ is not divided, okay, but we've got to lay down our arms, Um, when it comes to disputable matters and learn not to have a chip on our shoulder about other factions, okay? So when we read a letter, the reason I'm saying this is when we read a letter from a Catholic, you just got to know that we're going to read a letter from a Baptist, we're going to read a letter from a Methodist, we're going to read a letter from, from an atheist, and we have the same heart towards them all. It is the heart of God. It is the heart of Jesus Christ, that they would know the love of God and the freedom that comes from submitting to God's will. That is the mystery of worship, okay? That we are fulfilled when we submit to God's will. That is not an oppression, that it is a freedom, okay? And that we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But when it comes to man-made teachings, he says, what is your view on these man-made teachings? Okay, it doesn't matter if it's the Catholics, man-made teachings, or anyone else's. God's view on that is always the same. This is to be your standard, your authority, period. And it says, do not go beyond what is written. It also says, the apostle said, hey, we do know secret things. We have secret wisdom from God. And we know these spiritual things, these spiritual truths. But we express them in spiritual words, not in words of human wisdom. Okay? So if you think as a leader that you have some deep spiritual insight into God, you have to understand that that spiritual insight is going to be written expressly in the Word of God. You're going to find it. You're going to discover it. Okay? God's going to show it to you. But if it's something you have to go beyond what is written in here, if you have to just springboard off of Scripture and use your logic to get there, okay, then that's not as deep of a spiritual insight as you think because spiritual wisdom is expressed in spiritual words. Okay? And the same thing if you're listening to to, um, spiritual leaders who do that. Do not go beyond what is written. That is God's stance on man-made teachings. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your traditions. So let us all look at our traditions. Let us all look honestly at the word of God. I guarantee you, as he teaches you, you're going to find out that there were some things that you had wrong and that your church had wrong. And it's okay because we're children and we're learning, okay? And children aren't embarrassed about the fact that they're still learning and that there are some things that they don't yet know, okay? And neither, we, we don't have to be either. We also don't want, have to point the finger at each other and hate each other 
because we may have some insight that this person over here doesn't yet have. The Holy Spirit will get them there. Have confidence in that person. The Bible says love always trusts. Love always believes. Love is ever ready to believe the best of another person. You've got to have confidence in the fact that someone that loves Jesus is going to get there because Jesus is faithful and the Holy Spirit is a good teacher, better than you could ever be. Okay? So let's start putting a little more trust in the head of this body. Okay? And thank you for that letter. That's a good question. All right. <clears throat> Number two. How are we doing on time, Gary? About 10 more minutes? My goodness. <clears throat> okay. This is from a woman who says, I have been listening to you on YouTube for a few weeks now, and I've been enjoying the messages. Sometimes I feel like I have a desire to study, study, study the word, looking up words in the Hebrew, Greek, and learning the Bible like never before. But I'm a stay-at-home wife and possibly soon-to-be mother. I want to please the Lord by serving my husband and household, but I wonder when it's appropriate to take time out to study the Word. I could do that all day, but I know it can become a burden to me if I'm not taking care of my household responsibilities. I just have such a strong desire to study. My husband told me that he sees a gift in me to teach, speak the Word with clarity and power, but I don't think the Lord wants me to do that yet. I'm just newly married, and I know that there are many ways I could do for him and that house. Um, I feel like the Lord wants me to learn the life of a servant to my husband and also learn the word. How have you found time to learn the word while being a wife and, the, and mother? How has God taught you his wisdom while doing your role as a mother and wife? Do you have any advice? And, by the way, thank you so much for this letter. <clears throat> First of all, what a beautiful desire um, in your heart to know God, to know God's word. And God will honor that, okay? Um, I don't know if I should use this person's name, Gary. Is it okay to use your name? Okay, not this time. But you know who you are. God's going to honor that, okay? Um, first of all, thank you to your husband. Please say thank you for me to your husband. And, um, you know, thank you really more from you. Um, for being a good example in the body of Christ of someone who encourages their wife to learn about God, to know God, and to operate in the gifts that God has given them. Okay, that's a beautiful thing. And you see that you have something that's very valuable there. God has given you the desire to speak his word. He's also given you a husband that is encouraging you and confident enough in you that you're able to do it. And you might even find, you know, that... You may be called to do it before you're confident, and that may be why he's given you a husband that is confident in you, okay? That's going to kind of push you out there and help you fly. So you thank God for that. That's wonderful. I wanted to remind you about uh, Mary and Martha, okay? You asked about how, how can you be a wife and a mother and find time to study, and you know, I just, all I can tell you is that God is a good teacher. <clears throat> he knows the program. I don't have one. I couldn't publish one for you if I tried. Um, I wouldn't do it anyway, but God is a great teacher, and the way that he teaches is through discipleship, okay? Um, I'm going to read to you um, Luke 10:38. We're going to start in verse 38. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And I believe, ma'am, that Jesus would say the same thing to you. You have chosen the best thing, and it will not be taken away from you. Okay, it is a good thing that you have desire to study. God gives you the desires of your heart. So you need to listen to that. You need to listen to your husband. You need to study the word of God. I will also say he has put the desire in your heart to be a good servant to your husband. Okay, and part of the wisdom that you will see um, in the Proverbs 31 woman um, and many other places is that there is a balance. Okay, and that balance really is learned in discipleship because it always comes down to um, when it comes to church leadership, there's always going to be a struggle here um, between knowledge and love. And scripture says knowledge puffs up. This is just a real simple way to understand it. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who thinks that he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know, 
but he who loves is known by God. Okay? So, if you pour your life out in service to your husband and to your future children, that is a service to God, and that is love. Okay? And that's important. <clears throat> God will give you the wisdom as to how to balance that out. That wisdom will come in a couple forms. First of all, your husband's guidance. If you see that your husband is not happy with the way that you're taking care of the house, spend a little time on that, okay? And if he lets you know exactly what his expectations are, you need to obey him and submit to him because that's what the Bible says, okay? So, yeah, you do. You need to make sure that he's happy with that. But your husband has also given you um, another, you know, encouragement or instruction. He, he says that you have a gift, so you need to listen to that as well, okay? But you'll find that balance if you listen to and pay attention to your husband and what he wants out of you, okay? Also, you're going to find that wisdom, obviously, in the Word of God. In uh, James, again, it says that if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, and then you expect that God's going to give it to you. Don't go back and forth. Know that what is given to you is wisdom, okay? It says, he who doubts can't receive anything from God because they're tossed back and forth in the wind, okay? So know this. God has given you a great gift. He's given you a husband that supports you. He's given you a desire for the word of God. He's given you a spiritual gift to speak the word of God. And he has given you the gift of wisdom. So listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and that voice will keep you in check, and it will come in the form of the written word, okay? The reason that discipleship is so important, okay, and this is the one caution I would have for you, and the same caution I have for anybody who has a desire to study. You have to be careful that the knowledge isn't what you are taking pride in. If you take pride in your knowledge, you know, you can get into the Greek and the Hebrew and all that stuff, and that can be great, and God will reveal things to you through that, okay? But you also have to be careful that you're not doing it so that you can spout off your knowledge to other people, um, so that that will give you some kind of authority or, in their eyes, you will be lifted up, you know, in their estimation. And that's just a human heart thing that we all have to deal with, okay? And the way that God keeps that in check is that, you know, when, when God calls you, it's very different than um, when man calls you or ordains you. When Jesus ordains you, he says, sell everything you, you have, give it to the poor, follow me. And then he takes you down a path where, you know, you have to trust in God every day, just, you know, for survival and for everything that you do. And he takes you down a path where, you know, you may not even have a formal education, as it says that the apostles didn't, okay? <clears throat> um, but you have the education of walking with him and watching the way that he loves other people and emulating that love, okay? Discipleship is based upon imitation. You walk with your rabbi, you watch what he does, and then you do the things that he does, okay? Okay? When uh, you get a man-made ordination or an ordination from an institutional church or from a Bible college or whatever, you go to school, um, you, you know, jump through the right hoops, you make the grade on the tests and the papers, and you do everything that these people tell you to do, and then they give you a piece of paper that say, says that you're ordained by God. But in the process, you have learned a couple of really bad habits. You've learned that, um, you know, knowledge is important, <laughs> Okay, um, you probably learn to argue in order to make your point because most uh, Bible colleges are going to be denominational in one way or another. And, um, you know, really you've taken on some things, um, some characteristics that probably by the time you get out, you've probably taken on some characteristics of the Pharisees that taught you. Okay, if you follow Jesus in servanthood, then you don't take on those characteristics because God keeps you humble. All right. And um, so, yeah, love your husband, love your kids. Um, but also realize that sometimes you do have to lay down the housework like Mary did and sit at Jesus' feet and just say, okay, I'm here to learn, okay? If you keep love, number one, respect for your husband, number one, as far as your servanthood, everything else will be in balance, okay? So thank you for that letter. That was a really good question. How are we doing, Gary? All right. <laughs> Gary says the potato soup is ready, which means that it's time for me to pray and get out. Is that right? Okay, time to pray and get out. I didn't get to all the letters. Ah! We're going to have to go live more often or something. I got way too many letters. But I'm glad. Please send me your letters. And um, I, I, I love this. I love having this time with you guys. Thank you so much. We did have a prayer request, an unspoken prayer request. So let's pray for that person. And I want to pray for you all. Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for this time together, though it seems so short to me. Um, Lord, I just I praise you for all these people. I pray that your blessing would be upon them, that you would make your face to shine upon them, that they may know you, Lord God. And I pray that you would fill them with your word and that you would correct, you know, the things in our lives that need to be corrected. Um, purge this sin out, Lord God. We are yours and we are holy and we are set apart for you so you can do whatever you want. I pray that you do that in our lives this week. I pray that we would treat each other with love and um, that, that you would operate in power in our lives this week in the power of simply obeying your commandments. Just help us to, to make those simple choices just this week, you know. not We don't have to worry about uh, everything all into the future. I just pray that this week that we would make those simple decisions where we usually go the other way. Um, close our eyes to our sin or whatever, I pray that this week we would make the choice to move towards righteousness and towards your holiness and towards where you are, Lord God, waiting for your bride at the end of that aisle. I pray that we would take one more step towards you and your holiness this week, Lord God. I pray for this person who has an unspoken prayer request on the board right now um, and any other um, unspoken prayer requests that were not um, expressed at all. I pray for um, all of those situations in Jesus' name that you would do your will, Lord God, but especially the one that, that was uh, mentioned. Um, you know who those people are, Lord God. Um, I just, I pray uh, that you would reveal your love, Lord God. You know, when we know how much you love us, when we get that understanding, it gives us such courage, the courage that you gave to the apostles, Lord. And we want to have that courage to speak your words and to live as you have instructed us to live. So show your love to us, Lord God and fill us with it, and help us to express it to others in all we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>